Hello and welcome to the Life Magnetics Podcast. I am your host, Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so pleased to be with you today, mostly because I haven't been here (laughs) for a while, and I have been going through a lot of, you know, changes. Some things have been going on, nothing super dramatic, but like a lot of things that I'm thinking about that are putting some other things into perspective. And my general philosophy is if I don't know what to do about something, then it is best not to do anything. So if you follow me anywhere on social media, and of course, I have a YouTube channel, I have an Instagram, I have a couple of podcasts, I'm about to onboard another podcast this fall. And I've got programs and things of that nature. But if you follow me in any of these different spaces, then you already know that I've been pretty quiet. And I figured that I'd owed it to you to come and to just kind of tell you why and what's going on. So that's what this this uh, episode's going to be about. It's not going to be about anything else. I'm not going to be talking about necessarily like, you know, lofty spiritual concepts. It's really just about me, where I'm at, and kind of maybe relating to you and where you might be at. So I kind of wanted to break down this episode by talking about what has been on my body, what has been on my mind, and what has been on my spirit to give you just an overview of everything that has been happening. And I thought I would start with my body, because for me, and for whatever reason, that's where everything comes from. Well, of course, I mean, my body is housing my soul. If my body in any way is out of alignment, then it's going to impact absolutely every other area of my life. Um, And that is particularly true for anybody who is creative and or creative for a living. And that is what I do. I'm very creative. I write. I teach. I'm also musical. Some of you might not know that about me, but I that is just part of what I do. I, I I'm the most alive when I am being creative. Having said that, I have not been very creative lately. I haven't been producing a lot of content. And that has something to do, I think, with the state of my body. Now, my, I'm well. Don't, don't worry. I'm healthy. As far as I know, I just got my labs back and everything looked okay except for this one little marker on one of the tests. And I don't even know what it is, but I noticed that it was a little high. And so I'll have to talk to my doctor about that. I think it has to do with hydration, honestly. For anybody who's been in any of my programs, you know, one of the main things I talk about is staying hydrated as a spiritual person because water is a conductive. It actually moves energy around. And when you're dealing with divine energy, that energy is inside of you. And so the water actually helps you to process it and allocate it and release it and so on and so forth. For whatever reason... It has been a huge struggle for me in the last year to get enough water. Now, my kind of tried and true rule is to get at least half of your full body weight in ounces plus 20 ounces. So if you are 160 pounds, then you would want to have, I guess, 80 ounces of water plus 20 ounces, so 100 ounces of water. And that's pretty much been my rule for many, many years. But for the last year, it's just been really hard for me to get that water in. And as a result, I think I have been having some stuff in my body happening that is a bit unusual. And I won't go into like what specifically necessarily that is. But I think like these little lab readouts that I'm talking about are a direct result of dehydration. And also like last year I was getting a racing heartbeat and I was kind of just feeling strange generally and I looked into that and like one of the leading causes of that was dehydration. I also by the way got my heart tested and I'm perfectly fine. My heart's all right, but it's all coming back to saturation. It's all coming back to hydration and just taking like physically like the basics is what we're talking about here. The most fundamental things that we need to do for ourselves, when you're falling behind on doing those things, it is likely there is a bigger problem surfacing or present. And I think that's kind of been what's happening with me, but we'll get to that. So my body has been, you know, I've been dealing with it and I don't know what it is. To me, when I was in my 20s and in my 30s, I didn't have to think about 
getting enough steps in. I didn't have to think about getting the right foods in, making sure I was exercising or doing all the things that my body needed in order to thrive. And I think that's because I just wasn't doing them. <laughs> but I was young and it didn't I didn't feel the cost of that. Well, when you hit your 40s and you hit your 50s, you notice when you're not supplementing or doing the things that you need to do. You know, after you turn 40 years of age, do you know that I, I think you start losing muscle at a rate of 2% a year or something like that? And your muscle converts to fat and to scar tissue. Like you just become, if you're, if you are not an overweight person, but you're also not building muscle or maintaining muscle, then you become skinny fat, which I have been for many, many years. I would consider myself to be, you know, not overweight, but definitely not in shape definitely not strong. Like I can't pick up anything. I can't, I could never do a pull up. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. So no strength at all. But I never thought about that in my youth. I just, I was alive. I was enjoying my life or not, you know, and I was just dealing with stuff. Well, now at this age, I have to think about every single thing I'm eating. I have to think about, am I getting enough sleep? I have to think about my supplementation because if I'm not giving myself these things, it shows up in my energy. It shows up in my mood. It shows up in my stamina. It shows up in my optimism or lack thereof. And it's crazy to me how I feel now at this age, like I'm playing catch up. Like I'm trying to find the way to catch up to that baseline, just the baseline of wellness that I used to feel effortlessly in my 20s and 30s. Now it is not so easy. So I've been thinking about just putting into place certain systems that would help me to do these basic things that I need to do. And it's come to my attention that I'm really bad with systems. I am not good with discipline. I am not good with protocols and sticking to them. Again, I'm a very creative person. And as a creative person, I give myself over to the passion of a thing, to the inspiration and to the motivation. And when it's not there, I'm not creating. But that also trickles over into my systems, the routines that I need to put in place to keep myself alive and really healthy and really happy. And if I'm not feeling inspired to keep with the protocol, I tend not to do it. So I have been dealing with myself around this issue for months, starting small, putting just little things into place, maybe a new thing every two weeks, like this new supplement I'm adding into my protocol and into my system. Just take that for two weeks, get used to taking that supplement. And then two weeks later, I'll add in another thing. Maybe it's another supplement. Maybe it's something with my nutrition. Maybe it's a spiritual practice. But like slow and steady wins the race. That's been my mindset. And I've really had an opportunity to observe myself and all of my internal shenanigans in my quest to do more for myself, to be more present, to take responsibility for the trajectory of my life and to put things into place now so that I enjoy my life 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. Like I've been noticing my own bullshit and calling myself on it. At the end of the day, what I can say about my body is that it is not where I want it to be. Like my energy levels are not where I would need them to be in order to do a lot of the work that I feel I'm called to do. Like I need energy to do that work. I need resources, inner and outer resources, in order to be in ministry at the level and scale that I feel I am called to be. But if I don't have that, then I'm not producing, I'm not creating. I'm also not at the weight I want to be at. And I, honestly, I'm so dysphoric here, I couldn't even tell you if I'm truly overweight. I'm, I'm sure I am, though. I'm sure I'm quite, I can see it on the camera, like I have eyes, I, I can see stuff. But I couldn't even tell you how much weight I've gained, if I've gained any in the last two and a half years since COVID. The last time I weighed myself was probably three or four months before COVID. And at that time, I would consider myself healthy, but a little fluffy, you know, a little sexy, a little fluffy, but not, not at my ideal weight, to be sure. Well, since then, since December of 2019, I've, if I were to guess, I probably put on 20 pounds 25 pounds and it's so weird because you know I have a long history 
I, we should get into this at some point. And if you guys want to hear it, let me know. But I have a long history of body modification. I have never felt good in my, my body. And I've had surgical procedures to augment my body to take things away and to put things in. We can have conversations about that. But because of that, <laughs> I've like changed, of course, I've changed my body composition and I gain weight differently in, in this day and age than I did when I was in my 20s, which I would assume if you're gaining weight, you'd probably gain it more symmetrically all over the body. But now, because I've removed certain parts, <laughs> certain things, bits of fat and this and that, like I, I tend to just gain weight in my middle. So it's like I've got these, you know, if I do say so myself, shapely legs and got these normal arms and such but then you've got my middle and I look like a block of Tillamook cheese from the Sam's Club it's not okay it isn't okay and it's just where the fat is settling at this time in my life but I got to do something about it because I'm not happy and here's where I'm going with this when I don't feel good in my physicality it affects everything. It affects how I interact with my husband. It affects how I feel getting out of bed and going into that bed at the end of the day. It affects what I am creative around and whether I create anything at all. It affects my joy, my optimism, my peace of mind. And I see some people, you know, on the internet where everything is true and, and real and authentic, of course. But I see some people who are quite a bit heavier but seem very, very joyful and full of peace and happiness about their present state. And I aspire to that. And I hope it's real. You know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like if I had an extra 100 pounds on my body frame, I mean, if I think I'm miserable now in certain ways, I can't imagine what I would be at that higher weight. But I do aspire to be joy filled, no matter what the state of my physical body. This is my lifelong thing. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. To be joyful, no matter what. To be in love with myself and others, no matter what. It always seems to be contingent upon, predicated upon, or tethered to how I feel about my physical body. And let me be clear here, not like how I feel in my physical body, whether I feel energetic, whether I feel sick, or whether I feel well. I'm talking about how I feel about it, my perception of how my body looks. If I don't feel good about how my body looks, I'm just not I'm just not in a good headspace and I have a very hard time creating. And so what's paramount on my mind right now is getting my body back to where it needs to be in order for me to feel good, keeping in mind, of course, that that feeling good about the body has to be healthy and well balanced. Because I think it's okay to take a critical eye to your body and to your health and to say, eh, you know what, I've got to do these things differently. That's different than taking an overly critical view of your body uh, when you're at a healthy weight or whether you're healthy and saying, oh, but you could still be better. You could still be thinner. You could still be this or that. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to be very real and clear about what is going on with myself. And then I want to bring into alignment or fix those things that aren't working for me right now. And I'm just telling you, this extra 20 to 25, but it's not working for me right now. And I don't know what it was, but in the last couple of weeks, I've just felt this resolve to just do it. Like, just stop it. Just stop it with all the talking to yourself about it. Stop it with all the, like, um, justifications and the workarounds, the mental workarounds that you have about your body and about your behavior, which affects your body, not changing the behavior so your body never gets out of the situation. Like, stop it. Stop the madness, as it were. And in the last couple of weeks, I'm just like, I'm done. I'm going to just shift and change. And again, here we go with just one thing at a time. One little thing this week, one little thing last week, one little thing next week. Over the weeks, those things will begin to add up. And so for now, what I have done, just so that, I mean, if you're interested, what I have done is, well, I have been not drinking alcohol as much as I used to. And I did, I wasn't a big drinker, but I used to socially drink and I would, honey, let me tell you something. I would love a cocktail. And it's no surprise <laughs> that I was attracted to the effervescent Miss Trisha Carr because she was a mixologist. Of course I found her and she found me. She would make me beautiful drinks and I loved them. But at the top of this year, I entered into like a 30 day or was it a 60 day? 
whatever it was, it was too many days, a 60 day weight loss health thing with my friend Brian Fisher, and we gave up alcohol. And I just really never went back to it because I realized I don't like it. And here's the thing, when I started drinking again, and again, I'm not a big drinker, but like a glass of wine, I noticed, wow, my feet are really swelling. Or if I tried like a harder drink, like a vodka or something like that, I found myself feeling terrible the next day. And it's not as if I drank enough to get hung over. It's like I had a cocktail, but I felt bad all day. So my body was just telling me, you don't really need to go out and be Carrie from Sex in the City, do you? You don't need all those cosmopolitans. You don't need to socially drink, like put it down for a little while. And so since then, I've had, you know, here and there, I'll have a cocktail. It's, it's okay. But for the most part, I've walked away from that. I have also returned to intermittent fasting. Now, there's so much diet and nutritional information out in the ether. I'm like sick of it. I'm sick of all the information. I'm really just interested in what my body is telling me is good for me. And what I notice when I intermittent fast is I feel better. Like my vibration is definitely higher. Also, I feel like I'm doing something because I'm hungry. (laughs) I'm hungry in the morning and I'm hungry late in the evening. It's interesting. It's interesting how we deal when we don't have food and substances just being shoved in our mouth all day. I mean, I was talking to my husband the other day and I I was talking to him about being hungry again and how it actually kind of feels motivating. It feels it feels good. Like like this is a normal part of life. It's interesting what the body does to compensate when you're hungry, because if you think about it, when the body is hungry, it wants food. And in the days of our ancestors, they would have to go out. They would have to use internal resources. They would have to have clarity of mind and thought and intention and go out and get that food. And so you'll find if you start intermittent fasting, you are much more uh, sensitive. Your senses are raised and your thinking is clear especially if you're tinkering with what you're actually eating when you're eating. Like if instead of maybe, you know, a two hour window where you get to eat a day or a six hour window when you get to eat every day. And so you're eating your Cheetos and you're drinking your wine and you're eating a burger. Like instead of doing that, if in those six hours you're eating salads, you're eating high fiber things, like you're being very mindful about how to feed your body. It's pretty impressive how it changes absolutely everything, whether you're losing weight or not. So I have returned to intermittent fasting and I actually really like it. I have one meal a day and that meal is what I call my big ass salad. And when I tell you it's big, I mean it. It is a big salad filled with greens. I try to rotate greens. If I've got some organic nuts, I like to put those in there and I just eat to my heart's content and I take a fiber supplement. I take my other supplements, my digestive enzymes when I'm telling you systems and protocols, I mean it. And then I stop and I typically don't eat past three or four in the afternoon. And I eat again the next day at around three or four in the afternoon. Now I do have coffee before that. And in my coffee, I do have cream or a creamer like a organic non dairy creamer, I've got to get off the dairy. That's my next thing. That's a few weeks down the road when I add a new thing into my regimen. It's got to be the elimination of dairy because it's jacking up my voice. I believe it's jacking up my voice, but that's a conversation for another time. These are the things that I've been doing, though, in my body to be healthier, to lose weight, to be clearer, but really to feel better about myself and about my body. Because again, I say unto you, when I feel good about my body, about my perception of my body, when I feel the health and the wellness and the peace inside of me in my body, that is when I can do the work that I came to do, which we'll talk a little bit about that work towards the end of this episode. Let me move on now, if you'd be so kind, from the body to the mind. I want to talk about what I've been thinking about in my forced sabbatical, (laughs) my forced pause. I have been doing a lot of thinking, you know, because there have been a few times in the past couple of months that I said, okay, it's time to go back to YouTube, or it's time to cut another podcast episode or make a post on Instagram. And I have to tell you, when I have contemplated doing so, 
I have been filled with dread. I just, I had, uh, how do I do what I do and do it on social media? Because I am developing such an aversion for the energy of these different platforms. And it never fails when I go on to a platform to consider creating content or updating or doing something. I, I see something else on the way. On the way to my post, I see somebody else's post or I'll see somebody's comment to something or I'll see what's trending on the timeline and it is all just bad news. It is all negative. And the people, the way people treat each other on these platforms is so disheartening. And also, I feel as a creator, it's like my voice is being lost in the wilderness of all these other people talking. And 98% of what they're saying is just absolutely... Um, non-essential. It is not necessary. And the majority of it is toxic. People, there's so much white noise in the world right now. There's so many people saying awful things, worthless things, non-productive things, non-edifying things. There are so many people who are becoming narcissists on social media. It is so weird to me. Like you see this footage of people at some wonderful panoramic spectacle. Maybe they're at a waterfall or maybe they're at a concert or maybe they're, it's some natural beauty. But instead of actually being in the presence of that, they're whipping out their phone and taking a selfie so that they can be seen in that. It is so weird to me. It is weird what's happening on this planet. It is not something that feels good. Like my podcast here is probably one of the only ways um, I'll probably upload this to my YouTube actually to get some uh, cross viewership and just to connect with as many people as possible about where I'm at with everything. But it is a cesspool. And I've seen people that I formerly regarded as people of integrity, people with light, people with something to do on this planet, like totally be changed by social media. So much so that what they are offering to the world now is evil and negative. I could tell you stories. And if you want to hear them, maybe in the future, we'll get into them. But I have seen people turn and be so enamored with their own selves and their own message and their own presentation that it absolutely changed who they were. Maybe, maybe they were never really that in the first place, but I don't know who these people are. These new, these new iterations are, but I don't want any part of it. I don't want to be associated with that. I don't want to be associated with nine tenths of what I see on Instagram. I don't want to be associated with 98% of what I see on Facebook, except what I see in my, my spiritual community, the Light Shine Lab there. But I'm not even very present in the Light Shine Lab because members of the Light Shine Lab aren't really present in the Light Shine Lab, which is another thing I've been thinking about, is that people energetically and spiritually in their awareness are very, very hunkered down right now. And I don't blame them. To some degree, I'm hunkered down right now. And what I mean by that is people, especially conscious people, conscious people right now are taking their position, right? They're taking their position in their sacred space and they are watching and they are observing. They are not engaging. And this is very intelligent, emotionally and intellectually intelligent not to engage with the white noise. They're just observing, and those of us that are spiritual, we're probably praying, we're calling in the energy, we're calling in God to help us lead the way forward, to make the way forward, but we're really not talking a lot on the internet. First of all, that's a fool's game because who hears you? And then how many of the people who do hear you purposefully go out of their way to misunderstand you and start some kind of a fight? Who needs that? Every time I go up on these platforms, I see that and I don't want to be a part of it. And so I'm having a real struggle right now in my work, I have to tell you, because I want to create, I want to speak, I want to be with people, I want to be in community, but I don't want the platforms and the infrastructure that are presently facilitating said community. And here's another thing about that, I have to tell you, I am not interested, there, oh, God, we could go into so much. Are you guys, are you listening? I'm going to just tell you, I am exhausted of spiritual community. I'm going to start this part of the episode by talking about my neighbor. <laughs> this is a neighbor that I had when I lived in Poolville, Texas, when I lived on that five acres with 1,000 oak trees that was so beautiful, but 
There were also a lot of scorpions. We're not going to go into that. And copperheads. Also not going to go into that. But I had a neighbor and his name was Marty. And Marty was just an awesome person who's a little older than us, maybe by 10 years. And when they would travel, they would ask us to go over and feed their goats and cats and we're like, absolutely no problem. But we got to know them a little bit. And when I was in Marty's home, I noticed he had a lot of pictures on his walls of like churches, look like mission trips to Africa and things of that nature. But you know, I also noticed Marty was drinking beer. Marty was not necessarily a quote unquote Christian like you typically find out there in Parker County, Texas. So I asked him some questions. And it turns out that Marty was a missionary. And Marty had planted multiple churches in his day in ministry. And I asked him, I'm like, well, do you have a church now? And he said, no, I don't. And I said, well, how come you're no longer doing that? How come you're no longer a pastor? And he said, people. And I remember laughing. At me, what do you mean people? That's why you have a church. It's for the people. He's like, exactly. He's like, my last church was stolen from me by my brother who made up and spread rumors about me that were false. And so I was driven out of the church that I planted. He essentially said that every church he was ever in, there was so much drama. And he was at this time in his life exhausted of it. He was tired of people. He was tired of their problems. He was tired of their drama. He was tired of their the way that they acted out and treated one another and treated him. And he had peaced out, moved to Texas to the country. And at the time that he was telling me this must have been 2015, I was just kind of starting my own community. But I had already started to see some of what he was talking about. And since that conversation with Marty, um, I've gone on to, to have my own feelings about this. He has actually, by the way, moved to Montana and planted another church, which I kind of had a feeling he was going to anyway, because the ministry lived inside of him. He believed in the message and in, in his gospel. He believed in the light of what he was talking about. It was just the people that made it so hard. And you see Jesus dealing with this too, don't you? Jesus turning over tables in the temple. Jesus yelling to St. Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Like, leave me alone, everybody. Or, hey, can you just stay up tonight because they're coming for me tomorrow and I need a friend. And predictably, inevitably, the two disciples that were with him just fall asleep. No friends. Nobody's got his back. It's lonely sometimes in that position. And I totally understood Marty and why he said that. But I hadn't yet fully encountered that in my own community. Well, it didn't take long at all before I was, uh, in my opinion, betrayed by multiple people, people who I don't even I mean, that would be truly another episode. If you guys want to hear it, we can talk about it at some other time. But just people who were never truly authentic with me about who they were. And so I was interacting with them at a certain level thinking, hey, this is my friend, or this is my partner in the work, or this is somebody that understands what we're doing. But they were having a completely different relationship with me. And that's the thing about ministry. That's the thing about creativity and what you offer to the world. Say you're an artist, say you are a painter. And in your painting, you are thoroughly inspired. You're inspired by whatever's coming out through you from the inner world. Or maybe you're inspired by um, God. Maybe you're inspired by a spiritual principle. And you're in the zone and the feeling of that, right? And you're painting from the place of that. And then you offer that and someone sees it. When they see your art and they begin to respond to that, that response is coming from inside of them. And if they're in alignment with you, with your connection to God or these spiritual principles or to your inspiration, if they're in alignment with that, they may be able to receive from your art that which is in alignment. But if they are not, if they are just attracted to the art because of the pretty colors or because they want to understand the spiritual principle that you have just expressed through your art, what they are actually doing is connecting to it from the place of their own inner workings and stuff. Where am I going with this? Here's what I want to say, and and this is about me. I'm talking about me. I have put myself up in front of people for years now. I have put myself on YouTube. I have put myself on Instagram. I have put myself on Facebook. I have put myself on podcasts. I put myself in programs, offering myself and what I know. And I'll tell you, I've done this with the best and highest intentions in myself. 
Never thinking that I was above anybody else. Never thinking that I had my shit all together. Never thinking that I had something that was better to say than anybody else. Never thinking to myself for a minute, I am telling you that I am some kind of a guru. Rather, coming from a place of, I want all of us to feel this beautiful thing that I feel. I want all of us to know this powerful thing that I have come to know. That's been where I've come from. But just because that's where I've come from doesn't mean that what is offered through me has been received at that level. And when somebody watches me on YouTube, they are bringing all their stuff to that interaction. When somebody listens to this podcast, they are bringing their whole life to this moment that we're sharing together as they're listening to me speak. And it really has nothing to do with me. It doesn't. And check it out. If what I am talking about is truly from God in any way, meaning it's true, it's love, it's authentic, it's real, and that resonates in someone, what does resonate imply? Movement, energy movement. Stuff is moving around. So if what I am saying is causing something to move around in somebody else, the end result of that is not always going to be good. For me, at least. Sometimes when the energy moves around in someone who's listening to what I'm saying, The result is an awareness, an opening up, an activation, an understanding, and a different level, and they embrace it. But sometimes when the inner workings are jostled around by truth, knowledge, love, or light, that is uncomfortable to sit with for people. And they react from the place of that discomfort. And a lot of times that reaction involves projection attack, misunderstanding, and so on. And I have encountered this so many times in the work that I do. I think I'm connecting to people. I think people know that I am trying to connect with them as authentically as possible to share this thing that is so precious to me. I think they know that. I think they're meeting me in that same room, but they're not. They're looking at me critically. They're waiting for me to make a mistake. They're questioning, who do I think I am to say this thing about that other thing? In other words, they're not authentically with me. And this has been my lesson to learn. For many years, I thought, oh, this person is authentically with me. This person loves me as much as I love them. This person sees me as much as I seek to see and understand them. But so many times, this was not the case. They didn't see me. They didn't want to see me. They needed me to be something that they could argue with or oppose or take down. They needed that motivation, a negative motivation, in order for them to do what they went on to do. And it's it's a very backwards and twisted kind of reality, but it's one that I've had to deal with. And like Marty in Poolville, Texas, I'm exhausted of these people. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm exhausted of these people. In any spiritual community, there are also the people having to deal with themselves. If you have a program that's filled with, I don't know, 150 people, and we're meeting three times a week, and some of those meetings are live, and they're interacting with each other, there's going to be drama. There just is. And so not only is it about me dealing with my own self in the midst of the work that God does through me, it is also managing and trying to deal with and help the people in the community better understand. And that gets exhausting too. I'm just being very honest. I'm kind of burnt out. I feel misunderstood sometimes with some people. I feel in some ways people took advantage of me, but here's the thing, to be taken advantage of, you have to be territorial over what you have. And and I truly am not. People have taken from me. People have stolen from me. But I don't feel that I have been depleted because there's enough for everyone. And that which is removed from me, I can make up three times, 10 times as much if I set my intention to do so. I'm not angry, but I've just, I've become used to it. I've become used to it. And there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about being so used to the dysfunction of people and humanity because of my interaction with them that sometimes you just need to go through a season of just being like, I got to I got to step away. I got to step away. And I feel like that is what I've had to do. And I don't know what's next for me going forward. I have to be honest with you because I don't want to be slick on the Instagram. I don't care. I don't want to be like, oh, so polished and edited on YouTube. I don't care. I really just want God to help us 
Find a way to come together authentically to do God things. That is what I want. That is where my heart is. And that is why I'm quiet because I haven't found the way. I was inspired to make this episode today because I've missed you. And I hear from some of you from time to time. And I love you. And I've actually really been happy to and kind of geeking out about reaching out one-on-one to a few of you just to say, hi, I'm thinking about you. And it never fails to surprise me how gobsmacked sometimes people are. In my mind and in my heart, I want to create a space where I can interact with people that way and they can interact with me without it getting distorted, without the ego entering into it, without personality conflict, without hypersensitivity. I just don't know if it's possible. Maybe for me, it's about just podcasting. Maybe for me, it's just about books. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is I'm in a season of I don't know. And I wanted to share that with you. And I think it's okay that you don't know as well. I think if you're one of those people that is hunkered down energetically, because let's get real. The world right now is going off the rails on a crazy train. We have Russia. We have Ukraine, we have the U.S., if you're here with me in the U.S., political divisiveness, uh, racial divisiveness, violence uh, across the, like there's, if you, if all you're doing in your life is being plugged into that, I can't even imagine what kind of woe, W-O-E, you are living under right now. I think most of us are conscious enough to unplug from that. I hope you have unplug from that. And that's why a lot of you are just hunkering down. And it reminds me of the quote by Pema Chodron. If I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. But she essentially said, you are the sky, and everything else is just the weather. And as we're hunkered in, as we're in our sacred space, we are the sky and we're observing the weather patterns and the storms that are rolling across the sky and the sun as it rises and it sets, the moon sitting high in the sky. We're just observing. We are the sky. That's where I feel like a lot of us are. And if that's where you are, just being the sky and letting the storms roll past, because you already know there's another storm coming, honey. And when the seasons change from joy into contemplation, into the season of questioning and curiosity into a seasoning of suffering as the seasons change always always a storm is the first signifier of the change in temperature the change in atmosphere and it shows up as it moves across the sky but just as it is inevitable that the seasons change so too is it inevitable that the storms shift and move out making way for the sun that's where I'm at. I'm hunkered down. How about you? You hunkered down? Let's hunker down together. All right. The last part of this episode I wanted to touch upon is spirit. What am I doing in my spirit? What am I doing in my spirit? I'd say that's the most important thing, but I've already talked about why that is not. I mean, it's not necessarily the, when I'm dealing with my body, when I'm dealing with systems protocols to heal my body, sometimes my spiritual disciplines fall to the wayside and that's okay. When I'm dealing with my mentality, my inner world, my thinking, when I'm moving things around and adjusting, sometimes I need to take some space from the body. Sometimes I need to take space from other areas of the life. In my spirit, I've been thinking a lot about what's exciting to me. And I have a few things that are exciting to me. Do you want to hear about it? First and foremost is a meditation training that I am creating. And I'm, I'm at the beginning of it. I have the meditation track. And I've laid some of the affirmations, attunements, and subliminals in the track. But I'm also working on a system to go with the track so that people know how to use it, receive the attunements and the adjustments. Uh, These meditations have a specific outcome. And so to receive that outcome, you kind of have to do a few different things. And there are all kinds of different meditations that I am creating. The first is going to be around opening up to spirit and opening up your psychic and spiritual connection and like opening your third eye and actually having this happen in an evidential way through this meditation system. So I am creating that. I'm kind of slow going because I've got other things that I'm thinking about. I am also in the process of almost launching, not quite yet, but launching my own class called Many Mansions. This is not going to be affiliated with the Light Shine Spiritual Academy. Many of my programs for the last few years 
in fact, all of them, I think, have been through Lightshine. This is just Crystal Ann Compton. Many Mansions is an old class that I did. I want to say, mm, was it 2016? And it talks about dimensionality, talks about cosmic rays, about planes of consciousness. It talks about interdimensionality and interdimensionals, the different types of beings and also crop circles and star seeds and like all of that kind of weird, wild, wacky stuff that I just love to dive into. And I once created a program around it and it was my most popular program. Well, the production from that old program is not what it needs to be by these days standards. So I want to redo it. And also, I don't think necessarily the same in all ways about what I previously taught. And there's some new stuff that I want to bring in. So I'm going to redo the whole thing. And I'm going to offer that probably sometime in the fall. And I don't care if I just have two students, one student, if it's just me and one other person, I don't care if we have 100 people there. That's awesome, too. It's just going to be a circle of dimensional up leveling. Can you dig it? I hope you can. More on that to come, of course. I have also consciously entered into some discussions with a very good friend of mine named Elanique. Now, Elanique is ugh, the bomb. If you attended our last Holy Agreements, which I want to say was in May, Elanique was there and she gave kind of a little bit of a talk on healing. She shared some of her story. And so if you were there, you already know how beautiful and powerful Elanique is. And so Elanique and I are going to be collaborating in the future on a few different things. The first thing we're going to be doing, I think, is a podcast. Because if I don't have 17 podcasts, what am I doing? Am I even alive? So we're going to have another podcast, but I am so excited about this one because this is going to be all about A Course in Miracles. And it's going to be the interplay of the novice, which would be me, and the teacher. I, I want to say expert. I don't think Elenique would want me to call her that, but like I would, I would want to call her a master on A Course in Miracles, but I don't think she would want me to call her that. But she is a profoundly effective and transforming teacher of A Course in Miracles. And I am a novice. Of course, I'm familiar with the work. I have A Course in Miracles. I've played Bible bingo in it. I understand some of the concepts, but not at the level and depth of Elenique. And so what we are going to do over the course of this podcast is every week, take a teaching, moving through A Course in the Miracles in a systematic way, and then I will read the teaching. Of course, she will know the teaching, and then I will come to that interaction with questions and with commentary, and we will have deep discussions around each of the teachings in A Course in Miracles, novice to master, and I just, ugh, are you kidding me? I think it's going to be amazeballs, amazeballs. And if you are interested in A Course in Miracles, if you are really just interested in connecting spiritually, please watch this space because I will announce when our podcast is released. I would love to have a video version as well as just a regular audio podcast version. But you know, I will tell you everything. You'll be the first to hear about it. By the way, if you're not part of my text community, truly it is my text community that hears about everything. And of course, I don't text all the time. <laughs> I'm quiet. I'm hunkered down. Don't hate me. But I always text when I'm doing something new. I, I will text, for example, when I release this episode so everybody knows. So if you want to be a part of my text community, if you're in the United States, it's free. If you're out of the United States, there may be a charge to receive my text. I don't know. You'll have to look into it. But all you have to do is go to textcac.com textcac.com. You can also go to my website, crystalandcompton.com. Don't forget the E in Anne, crystalandcompton.com. And on the homepage, there's a little section where you can figure out how to get to textcac.com. But join my text community so you will learn about this podcast being released because I don't know, I just feel like, yes, I feel yes in my spirit. I feel yes in my soul about it. All right, I've got that coming up. We are hoping to start in September, but again, I will let you know. We are also planning, now lean in, lean in. I don't care where you are, stop what you're doing, just lean in and just envision this, okay? We are planning a retreat in Curacao. Now, Elenique lives in Curacao and Elenique has the hookup and the connection. She has the hookup with a beautiful hotel in Curacao with all the amenities and everything we would need to get together and high vibe tribe it out. 
There are also dolphins. We can meditate with dolphins. I can't even, I can't even, you will, you will hear more about this as it approaches. We are thinking about next spring, but we shall see. But we are talking about doing a beautiful retreat in Curacao soon. And of course, we don't just want to get together and paint our nails and get a massage with dolphins, although that does sound rad. It does sound rad. We want to get together and shift it. This is going to be a retreat that's about radical self-transformation and through miraculous processes, which we will talk about the closer we get to it. But if you're ready to heal, heal the broken parts, clean out the house and bring in the fresh air, which of course we're talking about spirit and up level high vibe. Like this is a radical healing transformation process that we're going to be doing during this retreat. And you'll have all the support that you need. I'm excited about it. Can't you tell? I'm excited about it. And that's what I'm looking for in my life right now. I'm looking like what's lighting me up? What's making me feel something? I haven't felt like sharing in a while until today. And I thought to myself, do they even want to hear about this, though? Do they want to hear about what I'm struggling with? Do they want to hear about the mundanity of my life? Do they want to hear about the things that are coming up? Do I need to have a, an expert or somebody to interview in order for them to want to listen? I don't know. But here's the thing. I felt moved to pop on with you. And I think this is what I'm talking about. I think what I'm talking about is being real and trying to connect in a real way with people who are real. And with people who have their own stuff that they're dealing with. And I figure if I can share authentically without needing to teach all the time, right? Which I love to do and I will do, but without needing to do it all the time, without ne needing that performative aspect to anything, just being me. If I can do that, I'll show up more. A hundred percent. All day, every day. Well, not all day, honey. Okay. Or every day. But I'll show up more. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe I shouldn't care whether you want it or not. If you don't want it, you don't have to subscribe. If you don't want to hear me, don't follow me. By all means, don't follow me. But if you do, if you're interested in what I'm connected to, not even me, like who cares about me necessarily, but if you're interested in what I'm interested in, and if you are interested in me and what I'm doing and what I'm dealing with, even the hard things, even the things that piss me off, even the things that make me sad, and especially the things that give me purpose and joy, well, then stay connected with me. I'm not going away. I've just needed to step away because like Marty in Poolville, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I want somebody to stay up with me tonight in the garden. Like, just be my friend. Sometimes I feel like that. Just stay up with me in the garden. Can we just be people? Can we not have an agenda? Do I not have to perform? Can I not perform? Can I not be what you need me to be? Can I just be here present with you now? Like, that's what I want. And I felt like you guys could hear that today. And I'm also not saying that anybody hearing this has done anything to me. Like, it is statistically almost impossible that anybody listening to this is involved in anything that I've spoken about that has exhausted me. In fact, if you're listening to this, it's probably because you get me. You really get me. So why don't we start here? Why don't we start here? And I still have to change the name of this podcast. <laughs> I can't stand life magnetics. Well, but it's, I mean, it's an energetic anchor. I mean, it's not that I can't stand it. I just want it to be more sexy. Not sexy, really, but like juicy, like juicy, like, mm, I want it to encompass what I'm trying to do. I haven't gotten there yet. So for now, it's life magnetics. Maybe we'll get there in the future. All I know is, I am glad you're with me now. I am glad for each and every one of you that has stuck with me since, what was it? When did I start my YouTube even? Like 2012 or 11? I mean, 11 years ago. Thank you for sticking with me because I know, I know that I know that I know that there are some real OGs out there that have been with Crystal and Compton the whole time. And I thank you for that. Well, let me close out this episode of just talking <laughs> by acknowledging that we need another holy agreements session. Um, we didn't have one in June and we had one in April and in May. And I thought at the time that I didn't know that we needed to do them every month, maybe every other month. So that would be July, which this that's this month, but it's the 27th. So I feel like in my spirit, just a, a couple more weeks would be good for me. And then we'll have another Holy Agreements session. So if you are not subscribed to the Holy Agreements newsletter, um, it's not a newsletter. I don't I don't write a newsletter. But the, the um, mailing list, all you have to do is go to crystallandcompton.com slash agreements. That's crystallandcompton.com slash agreements. 
and sign up. I don't like spam that list. I don't have like some marketing campaign. I'm not, no, it is just for people who want to join me on the Zoom call. It's free so that we can pray for the world and for ourselves and we can usher in real manifestation and change. And if that's you, if that's something that you would want to be connected to, especially since we'll have another meeting sometime soon, go to crystallinecompton.com slash agreements and sign up. Also, if you're interested in the Many Mansions program, that is going to be announced on my website for sure. So just bookmark it and check it from time to time. I'll announce it here and in other spaces. But if you're like me, you're probably not hanging out on social media a whole lot. So that is the way to definitely know what I'm doing, plus my text community at textcac.com. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will be back to talk some more in the future. Make sure you subscribe and that you follow. And if you can, like and leave a good review because that just makes sure you will hear me the next time I offer my voice to the wilderness. You'll hear about it, you'll know about it, and we can connect. Until then, please never forget that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to the Life Magnetics podcast. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share to help us continue to grow. To join my text community, go to textcac.com. To follow me on Instagram and on YouTube, just search for me at Crystal Ann Compton.